on this episode of Science. Welcome to Science. I'm Nate Macon. I'm the physics teacher here at Skyview High School. And I teach in a program called the Science, Math, and Technology Magnet. And today is one of our biggest events. It's SMT Tech Day. It's two days before Thanksgiving, and so we're having a Turkathlon. More than 70 teams are competing for points in a series of events deviously devised by our teaching staff. These teams can earn points for not only completing tasks, but also by doing those tasks well. We can't follow all 70 teams, so we picked two squads squaring off for the first annual Chattels the Monkey Memorial Trophy. Team one, a pair of freshmen ready to make their mark on Skyview High School. We're gonna beat those juniors and win this challenge. We're gonna ice them and turn them into junior mints. Team two, three upperclassmen who can't wait to show those freshmen who's in charge. We're gonna win this. <laughs> Keeping with our Thanksgiving theme, students built pine cone turkeys to use in their challenges. The teams could go to any station in any order they wanted, but we had our competitors start and end in the same place. Challenge number one, welcome to the hot turkey. First up, a brutal challenge that asks competitors to do what nature couldn't, teach a turkey how to fly. Teams have to build a hot air balloon. The goal is to get it off the ground. The higher it goes, the more points they get. Since this was our starting point, the teams worked just one table apart. What kind of design do you want to do? <laughs> It's going to be a weird one, but it'll work. Do we? Yeah. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. What's your big idea? The basic design for most teams, a simple cut or platform to hold the cotton balls, connected to the trash bag balloon with tapes or straws. He told me that we should not use string, so he wants me to tape it on, and so far I trust him, so I'm going to go with it for now. Hopefully we can beat our uh, competitors using this. This is going to be an awful looking circle. This is not even close to a circle. And that kind of works, not really. I have a feeling this is way too low. Like way too low. We can like cut the straws in the middle and tape the straws back together. I can just imagine, we're going to start this thing, it's going to go up in the air and then it's all going to catch on fire and just fall down in a big I would actually like it to go on the roof. Inferno. That, I would like to see that. You're gonna, yes, it's going to catch on fire, dude. It's, it's going to catch on fire and fly away, that's the purpose. It's going to be a big show. Everyone should want to watch it. Here's how it works. Even though it's small, the flame heats up the air inside the garbage bag giving it more kinetic energy, meaning the literal air molecules are moving faster. Since they're moving faster, they collide with the bag more often than the molecules on the outside of the bag. And this creates what we call a pressure difference. It's the same principle that powers full-sized hot air balloons. And basically we've made ours out of a trash bag and we've made that like the, the parachute part of it. Uh, we connected it with straws to the piece of tin foil that is going to be holding the cotton. Now it's going to work is when we light the cotton on fire, it's just going to, the heat is going to cause the bag to lift up, hopefully. And hopefully, yeah, we can get it up to maybe the roof. Probably not. <laughs> Think it's going to work? It We're going to find out. This is not going to work. It's going to work. It's not going to work. We've kind of got to hold it up so that he can light it. Yeah. You're getting the... Hold on. Just keep it like that so this way the cotton balls are in the same place. That's fate. Oh, it broke. Yeah. Did you guys need to be signed in? It just burned right through it. 
So, yeah, we should probably just put it up before we're done. That was sad. <laughs> We put the uh, the basket that held the cotton balls down too far, and the heat was too much, and it just melted right through the straws. So obviously that didn't work. Hi, that's slit. Lower slit. It the lower it. Okay. Right, do you guys need? Oh, we already did. Okay. Oh no. Jake, why'd you do that? Oh. <laughs> Bang! Bang! Anyone got any marshmallows? No marshmallows. Our juniors don't give up and head back to the table to start from scratch. So let's just basically start over. <laughs> oh, that looks great. Yeah, so the cotton, <laughs> you go in there. My arm's kind of stuck in there. In the top of the cup. They should stay. It's just going to be kind of hard to light them. <laughs> yeah. going. Both teams come up with sound plans but struggle when it comes to execution. Neither team realizes how hot that flame will be until it's too late. And they're cleaning up melted plastic. <laughs> What's happening to the bag? No! <laughs> no. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> That's great. We put too many cotton balls and it was too hot and it just melted the bag. Well, well you get what you get. Especially for setting it on fire and fusing it to the ground. Each team earns just three points on this challenge. But just because these two teams didn't get off the ground doesn't mean that nobody did. Check this out. This team's balloon soared, as did several others. I posted these pics and more than a dozen others from Tech Day on my Twitter feed, and we'll have more throughout the show. Our team split up, each going a different direction. Challenge number two, the turkey flap. The freshmen took on the turkey flap, where they had to build wings or a device that could attach to their pinecone turkey that would guide bubbles through an obstacle course. They can use straws, index cards, rubber bands, and pipe cleaners, but have only two attempts to get it done. The more obstacles they clear, the more points they get. So, I had a piece for you. I don't know, I just need to do it a certain way though. We need to do it a certain way. Our freshmen build a decent set of wings, but struggle to blow bubbles. Some events give out bonus points for having fun. At the turkey flap, students sing Disney songs for an extra point. But half of the freshman duo is hesitant. How hard is it to sing a Disney song? I don't know the you lyrics. You just move your lips and talk. <laughs> I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> so far, these ninth graders are off to a rough start. Challenge number three. Thankful for the periodic table. Our upperclassmen head to a challenge that combines the periodic table of elements with language skills. Using just the letters on the periodic table, representing things like gold, iron, and helium, they have to make words that relate to Thanksgiving. Twelve words earns them max points. These guys, Tamsin in particular, are word wizards. The letters are listed, but having a good grasp on the table, which is important in chemistry, gives them a leg up on quickly spotting good combinations. The words fly out fast, and they reach 12 quickly. But here's the thing, if you put a sentence on here, you'll get your 10, so you're about 9 right now. A sentence? Uh-huh. Using these? Like use, any, make those, use those words to make a sentence right here. Do you have to use all of them? <laughs> no. How long of a sentence? Doesn't matter. After they come up with their sentence and decorate their list, they earn two bonus points for a total of 11. So we have a lot of points. We have a master scorekeeper. So when the students report their points, they get posted in real time right up there. Challenge number four, Barbie bungee. For this challenge, our teams have to build a bungee cord for Barbie out of rubber bands. They'll toss her from the second story balcony in the Skyview Commons. Their mission is to get her head as close to the floor as possible. If the doll head touches the floor, it's bad news for Barbie and bad news for our teams. We need to uh, do this like from off of there, like to see how far it'll go, and then add more and more to estimate how many it'll need to do it from up there. Okay. Yeah, yeah she just... went like 45. Oh, that was like 32. Yep. 
So 31, 131. We gotta find out how long of a drop it is using each rubber band. See what the best length is and make sure that Barbie has a good time. Using just a few rubber bands, the teams measure how far Barbie falls in a short distance, over in the testing area. Here, they can only drop her a couple of meters, so they need to use math to extrapolate how many rubber bands they'll need to go the full distance. They do their calculations and graph it out. Uh, we're using the equation of slope, basically y plus um, mx plus b, and that will determine how many rubber bands will it take for her not to actually hit the ground, but to get a little bit off the ground, so this way that she doesn't quote unquote crash. Once they're sure, they tie together as many bands as they think they need, strap them to Barbie, and head upstairs. They only get one chance at this, so they cross their fingers and let her go. Team one has a communications breakdown. They didn't get enough rubber bands in their bungee cord, and Barbie has a short ride. Oh, Garrett, Garrett. Did you, I wonder if he, did he do the entire? Where's the passport? Right here. You have four. Garrett. How many did you use? I thought you had the right number. We used like 24. I thought, didn't you show me your paper? Team two comes just short of getting full points, but it's a solid effort. Oh, 10 points, I think. <laughs> Eight? Oh. Um, it was like up to here. Yeah, it was right here. It was right here. <laughs> so for your angle, it is. So with a lot of challenges, we're covering a lot of ground. I've got two here behind me in the commons. And we've got two more over here in Mr. DeGrande's room. So here we have students earning points for two challenges. The first is hand-eye coordination based upon communication and collaboration. And the second is based upon scientific vocabulary. That's not all. So out here we have some of our larger scale challenges. We've got water and fire. Today's famous scientist is Benjamin Franklin. Uh, wasn't he a politician? He was, and so much more. We know Benjamin Franklin as a philosopher, diplomat, and founding father, and that guy on the $100 bill. But he was also a first-class scientist. Born in 1706, Ben first made his mark and his fortune as a publisher. He later served as the U.S. ambassador to France and was the first postmaster of the United States. The whole time, he dabbled in science. He was a pioneer in demography, that's the study of populations, and also in meteorology, that's the study of the atmosphere. Franklin once worked with a whaling captain Yar. to map out the Gulf Stream, cutting the sailing time from England to New York by two whole weeks. Of course, what we all remember is his work in electricity. He was the first person to label positive and negative electrical charges, and the first to discover that electricity doesn't die, it simply moves from one place to another. Then of course, there's that kite, and that key. Franklin proposed that a kite could extract electricity from a storm cloud. That electrical current would then travel down a wet string and discharge from a key tied near the kite flyer's hand. Legend has it he flew a kite that was struck by lightning. Now, in reality, that would probably have killed him. So it's more likely that he extracted his electricity from charged ions in a cloud. His work with a kite led to his invention of the lightning rod, which draws lightning away from houses and prevents them from burning down. To the delight of grandmothers everywhere, Franklin also invented bifocals allowing the visually challenged to see things far away and up close. He also advanced science in the colonies by founding the very first hospital in the U.S. and by helping found the University of Pennsylvania. Plus, you know, the Declaration of Independence and uh, the Constitution and blah, 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 you know, whatever. So it's appropriate we picked Ben Franklin for our Thanksgiving-themed tech day. Did you know Ben Franklin advocated for the turkey to be our national bird, not the bald eagle? It's a good thing he lost that battle because bald eagle tastes terrible with stuffing and gravy. Boom, let's go to the scoreboard. Challenge number five, Mentos Challenge. You've probably seen it on YouTube. 
People stuff Mentos mint candy down the neck of a two liter bottle of Diet Coke, and foam comes shooting out in a column. That's our next challenge. Students start off by answering some challenging algebra questions. Okay, now you're a group of two, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna give you four questions, and you get a mento for each question that's right. Ooh. If you get all four of them right, you get a bonus, so you all get two to start with. Solve for x in five minus two x equals nine. It's negative two. X is negative two. Feel good about negative two? Five minus two? Yeah, because nine minus five is four, and then it's negative two x is equal to four. You divide both sides by negative two, x is equals negative two. You got it. The more they get right, the more Mentos they get. Next, they need to design the funnel they'll use to drop the Mentos into the Coke. <laughs> I can just picture the guy that puts it in is all like just... Once that's built, it's outside of the football field. The teams that come before set a good example of what it should look like. Hit the goalpost, like this team did, and earn 10 points. Get part of the way up and earn, well, part of the points. So that was pretty cool, but how does it work? The surface of those Mentos is a bit rough, with thousands of little pores. The carbon dioxide in the soda reacts to the pores when you drop the candy in. Those tiny little holes in the surface catalyze the release of CO2, forcing the liquid out of the bottle at a high rate. So now that we know how it works, let's see how team one does with it. Go, drop it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> that Diet Coke Mentos combination may have tasted a bit sweeter if their foam had earned them more points. Team 2 steps up, trying to do better and build a lead. They had the same problem as Team 1. Although they earned the max amount of Mentos back in the classroom, they didn't engineer their funnel well enough to earn max points on the field. That was kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge number six, the turkey boat float. Our final event of the day brings the team back outside, right where they started. Their task is to build a boat that can carry their turkey down a moat. To propel their craft, they have to pour soap and water on the tail to push it forward. Teams that quickly get from one end to the other get full points, and teams that don't, don't. Do the bottom part first, and then we can do the top part. Team two quickly designs and builds their boat. After it's built and tested in the kiddie pool, they realize they never measured how wide the moat is. Their boat won't fit. Meanwhile, team two makes a realization of its own. We're gonna make a boat with our pine cone. Where's our pine cone? Didn't you have the jerky? Oh. Go get the turkey, please. I don't, know where it don't is. leave him behind. We need him. Or it, whatever it is. While they search for their turkey, Team One is back with a new design. They try again, only to discover that they can't get it to balance. So it's back to the work area for more tweaking. Another group ditches the soap and water altogether and uses its turkey's feathers as sails, catching enough wind to push it down the trough. Team One returns, turkey in hand, and gets down to business. After some debate about the design, they go with Garrett's idea, and it proves to be a winner. But they also forgot to check the moat's width first. I don't even know if it'll fit in the moat, I just realized that. <laughs> Good thinking there, genius. Well, hold on. But we just... Yeah, it fits. But now it's completely soaked. It fits. Happy. Crisis averted, but they still have to make it move. But first, it's Team Two's turn, and they make a soap and water mixture. So why are they using soap? Well, soap is hydrophobic, or water-fearing, and it weakens the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. That reduces the surface tension of the water by as much as one-third, which means less resistance for our turkey boats as they try to travel down the moat. But all the soap in the world won't help Team Two. After two redesigns, they've still made a boat that won't travel. Uh, didn't make it very far, had some propulsion problems. We realized that when we tested it with the water, the cardboard got wet, so the more wet it got, the more difficult it was to tape it. 
So that got in the way. And it would have been more helpful if we had sized our boat down at the beginning instead of having to trim it down to make it fit into the... The thing is, our turkey is fat, so it's really heavy. With Team 2 sinking, Team 1 has a chance to catch up. Staking on water. <laughs> you got it. Oh, it oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, you wasted that last one. Oh, no. oh, it's stuck. Oh, dang it. Their craft doesn't go all the way, but it's still a success and earns these freshmen some big points. <laughs> That's a good design. No, really, it wasn't bad at all. <laughs> it won't float, he says. <laughs> it won't I'm, move, he I says. I told you I was sorry. <laughs> at the end of the day, our two teams are inexplicably tied. But it didn't have to be this way. Let's go back to the tape. Earlier in the day, our freshmen didn't decide to sing Disney. They had some real conflict there, and that's going to end up costing them. How hard is it to sing a Disney song? I don't know the you lyrics. You just move your lips and talk. I don't know the lyrics. Here, can, can, does it have to be the entire group that has to sing? Yeah. Here you go. Okay. Thank you. So if the freshmen had just sung a couple bars, of one Disney song, they would have gotten one bonus point, and that would have been enough to put them over the top and into the winner's circle. But they didn't like to sing, so now we have to go to our English teacher, Mr. Scott Manier, to administer a winner-take-all spelling bee. Our juniors go first. Impetuous. I M P E T U O U S. Very nice. Six out of ten. Next, our freshman. Procrastinate. Why did I get this one? This. <laughs> you should know this word. I know, of course. Okay. P R O C R A S T I N A T E. Very good. Next word. Reconciliation. Reconciliation, that's silly. <laughs> um, R E C K. I probably already screwed up. Uh, yeah, R E C O N C L I. Yeah. Why'd you think K? <laughs> Where's the K? I was thinking from? of wreck, like in wrecking. And with that, oh, our upper class oh, okay. take the trophy. Am I okay right now? But, right. So it was a tough competition. Both teams really sold out, but in the end, we saw that experience really matters. And that means that this year's Tech Day trophy is going to the juniors. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> As you've seen throughout the show, I've been tweeting pictures of students competing in our Tech Day challenge. They all worked hard today and should be proud of themselves. If you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is at MakinN7. I love to post links to science news and other exciting stuff that's happening in my classroom and at Skyview. We'll put that up again at the end of the show. Well, it's time to get to the point, and here it is. Tech Day is about problem solving, but it's also about collaboration. It's incredibly important that these students develop effective communication skills, because when it comes to science, math, technology, and engineering, nothing great is ever done in isolation. And that's the point. Time for the old science mailbag. Jamie has a question about our last episode. He writes, Mr. Macon, why didn't we see the end of your rhyme? I think Jamie's referring to the point in our last episode where I started to rap, but got cut off due to a technical glitch. Take a look. I'm gonna drop the beat about science, y'all. Bring in that action. But I need a little bit more on the monitor. More on the monitor. All right, here we go. When I pop a physics squad, let me try to explain what happened. Jamie, my rhymes, from a scientific standpoint, were simply too tight. The video and audio equipment, just sim they just couldn't handle it. Um, I think this is going to make a lot more sense if we take a look at the ill quotient. My dope lyrics rate a 9.7 on the Sugar Hill scale. By comparison, Kanye West consistently checks in at a 7.6, which puts him in the funky fresh category. My rhymes, at 9.7, clock in at way to death. Due to safeguards on our cameras, the equipment shuts down automatically to prevent spontaneous combustion. This is, after all, a public school. There are kids around. Our apologies for the glitch. Thanks, Jamie, for the question. If you have a question for me, email me at scienceshow at 
vansd.org. I may just answer your question in a future episode. I'd like to thank our winning team, and I'd like to thank all 70 teams for participating in our devious challenges. I'd like to thank them for thinking outside the box, for trying new things, for being creative. And I'd like to thank you for watching Science. As always, I'm Nate Macon. At any point during the challenges, <clears throat> were, you, were you afraid that the freshmen were going to beat you? Um, I wasn't paying attention to that. I think we, we were, were more focused on the actual challenges and getting the points than we were on beating the freshmen. I mean, we knew we were going to win anyway, but yeah. So, I'm going to ask, the song. What happened with the song? Did you guys know that since you didn't do the song, you didn't win? I, I wanted to. And Jake's like, it was, I had... It was only the second challenge. I had no idea that would affect us later. I mean, a, a, one bonus point I didn't think would matter too, too much. I didn't know we would end up tied. Well, it's like, it's like for grading system, would you like a little extra credit? I just didn't want to do the song. Don't judge me. <laughs> Couldn't remember any. Terrible memory. Okay, I can list some. Okay, make a man out of you. Under the sea, I can show you the do world. You, do you do this in your spare time? I listen to some tunes before I go to what, bed. What? What? <laughs>